Hi everyone, this week we're going to be taking a look at an original Xbox that I picked up in a lot of junk. This one did not respond to the technical tap to open up the DVD drive, so went ahead, tore down the Xbox. Let's get right to the issue here. It does not read discs, so what we're going to do is take apart and clean the laser, see if that works. And if that doesn't work, we're going to tweak the pot on the laser. Try to get a little more power out of it and see if it will go ahead and read discs. So everyone by now probably knows how to tear down the original Xbox. We won't waste time getting into that. Get the covers apart. You don't need to take the motherboard out. I had that out because it was just going to do general maintenance on this anyways. Um, I'm just going to spray a little bit of white grease here on the gear to let the motor spin back and forth a little more freely. And we'll also replace the rubber band that is used for the DVD drive belt because it's not opening. Generally when it won't open that is the issue. Um, they're pretty cheap. You can pick them up on eBay. Just look up Xbox original DVD drive belts. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver to open the tray. You push the little part you can see there sideways. It will lower the mechanism and then allow the tray to slide out. It doesn't have to come all the way off. You just need to be able to expose that drive belt to get it replaced. And then we'll go ahead and get a look at the laser itself. To get to it, um, at least to show on camera, I needed to remove this PCB. We'll get it out of the way by disconnecting the ribbon cable and flip it over. Then we can get a closer look at the DVD drive laser itself. With it flipped up, we can see kind of far away, but we can see what we're going to be adjusting. There's a little tiny screw that adjusts the potentiometer, and this allows more or less resistance to the laser. Less resistance means more power to it. You don't want to adjust too far, so we're going to go in very small increments. As soon as you get it working, you don't want to go any further uh, because you could cause damage to the disc. So we're going to make minimal adjustments and see if it works. Hopefully this will fix it. If not, we can either replace the laser or replace the whole disk drive itself. Luckily with the original Xbox, the DVD drive is not married to the motherboard. So a DVD drive from any Xbox revision can be swapped in. There are very few computer drives that can have the firmware flash to work with the original Xbox, but some are possible. Now that we have it out, we can get a little bit closer look at it. Uh, it's going to be much easier just to show on camera. If I were just doing this, I probably wouldn't be taking it out. You just want to be able to get to it so that you can get your multimeter on it, check the resistance, and then make small adjustments. So on the side of the screw, there are little pins that connect to the PCB itself. That's what you're going to be measuring. If you connect to two and there's no measurement, switch. There's three there, use two, and you should see a reading on your multimeter. We will be set to ohms mode so we can check resistance, and then we will make small adjustments. It's a very small, you can use a small Phillips head that, or flat head that will fit in there, and just turn, and you want it to go just a little bit, not too far, because again, if you go too much, you're going to end up burning the DVDs. This is easier to do when you're not having your head far away looking through a camera to try and see if it's in shot. 
Um, you can see after I do get it adjusted, I actually went a little bit too far. I didn't show that I kept going back and forth, but you want a very minimal adjustment. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, check it. If it works, that's enough. You don't really need to go any further. Um, once I got it dialed in, reassemble it the same way you take it apart. It's just two screws on the slide rails that hold in the laser assembly. Put it back together and we'll go ahead and test it. You can see now the tray closes itself now that we have that new DVD drive belt in. It does open and close properly as it should. No alignment needed or anything. And just like that, with a little bit of tweaking, we are back to playing the classics. Let's load up some GTA Vice City, give it a quick test, and then I'm just going to go ahead and perform the normal maintenance that I do on these Xboxes, uh, clean any dust out, replace the thermal paste, and we'll go from there. I did test this further off camera just to make sure that there were no glitches or any crashes. Um, just to make sure it was working well, this is just a quick test. A little bit of a crash there, but that was my fault. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get into the maintenance portion. If this is all you needed, thank you for watching. If you'd like to continue on, um, we're just going to do regular Xbox maintenance from here. So to replace the thermal paste, you have to take off these clamps, one on the CPU, which we're doing now, and one on the GPU. Um, there is no release on the GPU, so you just gotta push down. I usually just put a screwdriver behind it and twist out just a little bit, just to get it to release. Um, the thermal paste on these is very old and very sticky. So the best thing I find to do is turn on the Xbox and let it heat up for a while and it will let the heat sinks free up from the motherboard. If you just try to pry them off, you could damage them. CPU always comes off pretty easily because it's a big heat sink for a small dive, but the GPU just didn't move at all. So what I did is power up the Xbox, turn off the fan and let it run for just a little while so that it heats up the paste will get at least a little bit gooey and then release and we can take it from there. If you are using this method, don't touch anything inside the Xbox while it's plugged in or powered on. If you touch the power supply, you could get shocked. I did go ahead and put the clamp back on the CPU just so that it wouldn't overheat while the Xbox was running. And you can see that after a little bit, I did disconnect the fan just so it would heat up faster. And now we can remove both heat sinks and get that paste removed. Um, alcohol will work, it just takes a very long time. So the best thing to use is Arctic Clean Step 1 and Step 2. Step 1 will eat the paste off without damaging any of the contacts. And Step 2 just gives it a nice clean surface for the new paste to adhere to.
If you're patient, you can put step one on and walk away for a little while and it will start to release the paste. If you're impatient, you can use a plastic spudger. Just be careful that you're not damaging anything. Definitely don't want to go digging at this with a screwdriver or knife or anything. Um, we'll just get this old paste cleaned off and get some new stuff put on because it makes me feel better. And just a slight glitch with the camera there, putting on the thermal paste. Unfortunately, no one's going to be able to yell at me for putting on the wrong amount. And then we are going to put the heat sinks and clamps back on. And if this is all you need to do, you're ready to go. Unfortunately, this one did have a foot casualty that I found in the bottom of the junk lot box. We're going to just use a little super glue. Don't bother putting it over the screw hole if you're ever going to take the Xbox apart again. Just put it towards the inside of the Xbox. It'll adhere just fine. And hold on to that for a little while. Don't go overboard with the super glue or you will glue your Xbox to the dining room table. You'll be in a little bit of trouble if you do that. And then we're just going to give a quick clean with a little bit of glass cleaner. The only way to really get these ridges clean is with, I find, a toothbrush or paintbrush to get in there. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to put it in the sink, take the metal shielding off. It's a whole process. So a little bit of glass cleaner, toothbrush, and some towels. We will get this cleaned up. And then I like to put on just a little bit of a shine after just to it hide some of the smaller scratches and brings it back to a newer shine with a little bit of pledge wood polish. Just brings back some of that original black color and hides some of the scuffs and marks. If there are any deep scratches, it's just going to highlight them. If you put on too much, don't worry, just wipe it off with a clean towel after. It's kind of like putting armor all in your car. It does the same basic thing, it cleans and protects the plastic and brings back some of that shine. And there it is, back to its former glory, looking great. If you touch it and feel any residue, just go ahead, take a clean cloth and give it a final wipe once all the pledge has soaked into it and it won't leave any sticky residue on there. So let's play some more by sitting. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.